Assalamualaikum. As you can tell by the title, I'm making Umrah. I'm gonna try and vlog. This is my attempt at vlogging. Why are you so nasty? Don't go so. So nasty. We're late. Okay. We are at our gate. And I already had a scare. I thought I lost my phone, but I, it was in my bag. This is why I'm, I'm like one of those people that my phone's always on silent. And it's in these situations where it really sucks. But anyways, we're at our gate. We're about to board. And yeah, we got here right at boarding time, which is not, not the smartest. But it's it. So we have boarded and Allah blessed me with a window seat, which I, I love being on a window seat. I don't know how that happened because we got here 30 minutes before boarding, but somehow, somehow I got a window seat. So I'm super excited. They have like pink lights. Come on, I'll figure it out. Anyways. I like the vibe of their plane here. And also the seats are comfortable. I'm feeling it. It's the fact that we're traveling with a travel group and we haven't even connected with them. Like, we haven't even messaged them to tell them we're on the plane. So I don't know how that's supposed to work. So, they gave us personal hygiene kits and it has like masks and stuff and we also got our e visa <laughs> these are the movies they have They had like a lot of options actually, but I I went with the safest one. And then just mixed berry juice, bread, butter, you know, the usual. My mom got couscous, which it has like chickpeas and stuff. I don't know. I feel like I'm gonna end up eating that because she doesn't mind like chickpeas like that. And then she got chicken kafta. And it looks like it just has basmati or something and green peas. Good food, nice flight attendants. It's giving. They even made do ah before we took off. Amazing. Um, but yeah, this bathroom is like really clean. We love to see it. Please don't mind my hands, guys. It's just henna. Um, it'll clear up soon. <laughs>
bro my mom is already stressing me out she's like i don't i don't see my passport i don't see my passport turns out this lady put it in a fanny pack okay me and my mom just got our bags rechecked them now we're headed towards departures so right now we're in jeddah and we're taking like a one hour flight to medina so yeah they have a dunkin donuts my mom said that they just copy america <laughs> Their airport is super pretty. My mom said that the airport looks so much better than it did the last time she came here. So we just prayed in a prayer room. There was like a voodoo station, stuff like that. It wasn't that nice. Okay, so we have a dilemma because my mom is over here like, I'm not taking pictures of you. Let's make that clear. I'm not taking pictures. We didn't come all the way to Umrah to take pictures. Here's my thing. Does this lady really expect me to go all the way to the Kaaba and not take a picture in Allah's blessed place, his beautiful place? And she said, no. She said, take your tripod. I'm not doing that. Tripod? Who's taking their tripod to the, to the, to the Kaaba? I'm under a little bit of some some vlog. We don't make vlog. No, 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 no. Some vlog. We need young man. But my mom is giving me problems. She doesn't want to take my pictures. No, I told her you can take picture, but I do. Car mosque. I said no. We don't want to take pictures. No, we're gonna take pictures there. Around next to the car when you're doing the tawaf. Yes. Worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and oh. then taking pictures. Or before we start our tawaf, we can take Maybe our pictures. Maybe before we start, but I or at, right right when we finish. Or after we finish, but not I during the tawaf, of course. But I want to take pictures there. Inshallah. Say inshallah. Inshallah. Exactly. Alhamdulillah. We did not come for Hajj. We come for Umrah. Why? Because if it was Hajj, I'm not going to take any pictures. Almost Hajj. No, that's too crowded. That's but right crazy. now we're in COVID. We're making Umrah. There's not going to be a crazy, crazy amount of people. Are you excited about to, to, to go back to Medina? And yeah, I'm excited to go to Medina. Medina is a very quiet city. Where do you prefer, very Medina or Mecca? Medina. Oh, wow. Medina, when you go there, I you're going to see the difference. There is tranquility that is exists only in Medina, oh. no, nowhere else. Um, what was your reaction the first time you saw the Kaaba? I was like, I don't know the feeling I had. You didn't cry? Was, I didn't cry at first. Then, then when I was asking for forgiveness, I think I don't know something what happened then I made me cry. Uh. At first when I come there, I was like, it was like supernatural. No, surreal, 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 surreal. surreal. Huh? Yeah, I don't know. Some people say that when they first see the Kaaba, they cry. I don't know if I'm gonna cry. But, I cry when I post it. but they said it's emotional because it's like um, you know, some people emotion make them cry. Some emotion make them like they are not here. They yeah, my mom doesn't cry that easily. I think I cry easier than my mom, so we shall see. Like you are in different world, you're not in the real life. I don't know how I'm the feeling that you're gonna have. Does Which your one do you feel like your body feels like you're in the presence of a blessing? Like, do you feel the closeness, or it's different? It's different. It's different. Yeah. It's different about closeness of Allah Subhanahu. I don't know the feeling that you have. I cannot express it. Yeah. So my mom's made Hajj before. Um, so this is her second time. She made Hajj in 2016. But it's her first Umrah. No. This is your first Umrah? Umrah. Oh. You did Umrah, Umrah when you did Hajj. Yeah. Oh. No, I did Umrah and then I did Hajj. Oh. I did the Gaza. Oh. And then after that I did Umrah for my dad. I did this dad. And today, this, and this trip too, I want to do another umrah for my deceased dad and I want you to do for my mom who is sick 
she was like yeah i'm gonna do it for my dad and you're gonna do it for my mom i was like since when do we assign umrah since today I assigned it. <laughs> she assigned it to me. I was like, whoa. After you finish your umrah, you can do it. I thought I was going to make umrah for myself twice, but I guess it makes sense. There's no need to do umrah for yourself twice. Yeah, you can make it as much as you want. Umrah. But like back to back. Yeah, What's umrah, the point? you can make it as much as. If I, if I, if I, I knew it that you can make several umrahs after you leave, right before we leave, like one day before we leave, that's why I didn't leave. But if I knew it before, I'm gonna be for my grandma, for myself again. Okay, we're gonna go to our gate. We just landed. It was like an hour flight. I was knocked out. This is usually the time I'm sleeping in the US. It's like six, seven a.m. back home. I'm exhausted. We landed and we joined our group and yeah, nah. <laughs> yeah, you're so mad. <laughs> our, our group has a bus that's taking us to our hotel. I <laughs> So we got to our hotel, Dalla Taiba Medina Hotel. It's so nice. So this is our hotel room. And then um, this is our um, bathroom closet. So we are now going to, we got our bracelets, which now because of COVID you need. And we are going to the masjid to pray Isha. Here it is. And our hotel is right here. Super short walking distance. It's a long line here. So me and my mom are so hungry. So we're gonna try and find some food. Y'all, me and my mom trying to exchange some money so we can get some food. So we got KFC and it came with like these three breads. This was all like $22 I want to say. And then a bucket of chicken and chicken tenders and then um, a bunch of fries. Well not that much. And then coleslaw which is not my thing. Maybe my mom will like it. Oh, so hungry oh my gosh y'all do not understand i don't know how but my adapter i lost the head that goes into this type of outlet i don't know how i lost it like either i lost it in gambia 
or I lost it in Turkey. I think I lost it in Gambia because I think Gambia had the same one. I called them to bring me one and they said they're coming, but I don't see them. I'm so tired. It's like 11.30 now. Anyways, we're gonna call it a night. It's like 11.30. We're exhausted. We want to wake up and go to the mosque for Fajr. So we need to go to sleep. So good night. Good morning. My mom is mad. She said I move too slow. You know. It's so always like about 3 30 tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It is 5 or 6 a.m. We're here to pray for Jeff. Koko Wafana, Indonesia. Or Malaysia. This random lady just came up to me and was like, photo <laughs> and took a picture with me <laughs> at 5 a.m. <laughs> so we just finished praying Fajr and then there was a Janazah prayer and now I want to see the things open up so yeah oh guys I missed it but the umbrellas are open Wow! I was having a photo shoot. What is my mom doing? You like that, Fini? Like that, Fini? Hola, ¿cómo estás, Salgado? Mi Salgado. My mom wants us to visit some place. go eat breakfast they have a continental breakfast from 6 to 10 a.m every single day and then at 10 30 our tour group is gonna go visit the um grave of the prophet Muhammad this is also a place where you can get zamzam -zam. and then they also have it like inside of the masjid they have like different things for you to get much zamzam -zam. okay. I got so scared. Look at that. Oh my god. Oh my god. I got so scared when they all just they out of I don't know what happened. They just got up and started flying. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. Back in the hotel. And this is our hotel lobby. It's really nice. Walmart breakfast. Station. There's a lot of stuff. Continental breakfast. I literally got anything that looked appealing to me. So excuse how I look, but me and my mom just got back from breakfast and I'm going to take a nap before we go see the I think it's called Rauta. See if you're gonna cheer for your mom. There's gonna be a lot of waiting. Going to the Raudah. So there's a long line. Ooh, this is our group. This is our group. We can't get lost. This is the entrance to the Rauda.
How do you feel? Good. Mashallah, Alhamdulillah, I've been alami yana yalla nangu sunyan nyep. Amen. Mashallah, Mashallah, yun tu salah salam nyu nali nyep. Kopu kopu magis lagi yun tu bigis nala nyu nala. Just took a nap. I took a good nap. Wow. Also, I'm noticing my skin is so clear. Like, I don't know what that's about. But, mashallah, my skin is super clear. And I, my skin was going through it before I came, so... I think I'm just, you know, in the blessed lands. <laughs> I want shawarma. So, I'm about to get food, and then we're gonna go pray. Um, Asr. In, um... The masjid, inshallah. So for the sharma, they said only after salat. So we prayed, and now we're going back there. I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm just hoping that there's not a long line. Why are you bringing the dog in the parfum? Come, ooh. One parfum, ten plus. Hey, what did you get? I'm going to bring plus. I'm parfuming. Take care of the shower, Yo, it's so funny. They guess your name here and they always say Aisha and they're always right. Because my name's like Miss Aisha. I'll be like, oh, wow, how'd you guess? My mom said, you guys can never guess my name. This is so funny. Mm. <laughs> so we got shower, ma. And I asked the guy, I was like, is it spicy? He said, no spicy. So, let's see. It's like really, really skinny. It's pretty dry, like it doesn't have anything. Yeah. It's dry, it doesn't have any sauce. Alright, some mayonnaise. What is here? So, I just came back from the room. We're about to go pray Maghrib in the mosque. I'm exhausted. They're closed again. So we walked to the other side, like the men's side, and um, we were hoping to find like the shopping area, but the issue is that they closed the gates um, after each shop prayer. So right now, if we were to do that, then we wouldn't be able to come back inside. And so to get back to our hotel would be really hard because we can't cut through the mosque anymore. So we have to go in like a huge circle. So we're just gonna try and wait until tomorrow, inshallah, to try and see if we can come back here. But yeah, this is the view. I've been exhausted. We're trying to push through. It's 5 a.m. and we're going to perfect it. In the um, it's a beautiful, it's so beautiful. It's beautiful in the morning, it's beautiful at night, it's beautiful the whole day. So, we just had breakfast, um, and today we're doing a tour. I know, like, we're going to the Cuba mosque, which I think is the mosque that had two Qiblas. So, there was a time where, like, the Qibla faced Jerusalem and then it switched to the like, Kaaba. So, it's two Qiblas. I'm pretty sure it's that one. And yeah, I'm excited. We're gonna get to see more of Medina because since we've been here, we've mainly just been, you know, at our hotel and at Masjid Nabawi. So, inshallah, should be good. Um, breakfast was nice. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He did Hijrah from Mecca to Medina And when they were on the Hijrah to Medina Our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And Abu Bakr al-Siddiq They stopped by at the outskirts of Medina And at that time Quba was far away from Medina If you look at the Haram If you look at Masjid Nabawi at the courtyard 
That was the entire Medina in the time of the Prophet All the Sahabas, all the companions, the Aws, the Fazraj, um, uh, they all lived in that vicinity. The, uh, the, 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 the Jewish tribes, they lived a little distant from that area. However, the majority of the people lived in that common area which we now know as Masjid al-Haram, which we now know as Masjid al-Nabawi, and the courtyard was the entire Medina. So now imagine, today we're having a bus, alhamdulillah, we're driving at a pretty good speed, so it'll probably take us 10-15 minutes to get there by car. This was the outskirts, this was outside of Medina. So when they were on the hijrah from Mecca to Medina, they stopped by a place to rest a little, to stay a few days before they actually entered the city of Al Medina. And when they stopped at that location, the very first thing that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions did was that they put together a masjid. The first masjid that was built in Islam. This masjid, we know it has many, many benefits to it. Of them is that it was the first masjid that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam built. We know previous prophets have put up other masjids. So we know, for example, Masjid Al-Aqsa. We know, for example, Masjid, uh, uh, Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca. These places were there, but Masjid Al-Islam, where Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam established as a masjid, was Masjid Al-Quba. Now, Alhamdulillah, you all have put in the effort, the commitment that you're here. And Alhamdulillah, we're on that way to go and reap those rewards that is in that Masjid Al-Quba. And SubhanAllah, right next to Masjid Al-Quba, there, there is a well in which a Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to visit. There's about seven wells in, in Medina that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to go and drink from. And of those wells, there's one by the name of Bir Azaf. This, this well was actually, it's close to Masjid Quba, and it is where, SubhanAllah, he drank from it and it is still flowing up till today. It is a story in which one of the Sahabas was riding back to his, his village, his place where he was living, and whether that salah was Fajr or Asr, whatever salah that was, that they were praying, they were in the middle of the salah. And in the middle of the salah, this Sahaba called out to them and told them that the masjid, the Qibla has been changed to Al-Masjid Al-Haram, to the Kaaba. And in the salah, they changed direction. The majority of the scholars and the most authentic narration is that that took place in Masjid Quba. Now we're going to also visit a place called Masjid Qibla Tain today, so don't get confused. The first masjid to be built in Islam is the first location we're going to go visit today. And Quba area is also known for a lot of dates. From the time of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, remember the dream that he had? He would go to a place that had date palms, right? As we approach Quba area, if you look on your right and your left, you will start seeing date palm trees. These dates are buried and picked and we eat from them. The ones that we buy around the Haram area, these are from some of these trees in this area. There's only one type of date or Ajwa al Medina is one day that only grows in Medina. It's called Awali, right? So this is one of the best dates. And these are the dates, the little round black dates that we eat. We get it from these very trees that we see around us right now, uh, uh, approaching Masjid Quba. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi drank from this well and it's still running today. Crazy. You know how I learn, you The water does not taste good. <laughs> Look 
the water is salty. Yes. And I lead it to the bus, inshallah. So cute. There's so many cats everywhere. So I actually messed up earlier. The but let me. What's the name of the mosque that has the two kiblas? Yeah, that's the one that has the two kiblas, not the Cuba mosque. You went Cuba mosque. We went Cuba. Cuba. And I'm like, oh, hey, Cuba. Cuba mosque. This is the that has two kiblas. The Kuffar of Quraysh, after their loss to the Muslimin in Badr, they wanted to come back and take revenge against the Muslims. So Abu Sufyan and all of his money that he brought back with him from the previous year, he said we will devise and come up with a group and an army that will go and wipe out the Muslimin in Medina. And we will go to them and take care of them. When Rasul heard about this, he asked the companions, again Shura, asking them what was the best opinion, what was the best thing to do. Rasul actually wanted to stay in Medina. So Medina is, you see that one uh, minaret all the way down there, that is where the city of Medina actually was. So he, he said, and Abdullah ibn Ubay al Salul, one of the hypocrites, also said he wants to stay in Medina. And the hypocrite, he wanted to stay in Medina because in his idea, if they were to come wipe out Medina, khalas, no more Islam and he could be who he actually is. As for the Prophet he thought it was a place of refuge, they knew the streets of Medina, so they had different uh, uh, approach to it, but they wanted the same. However, the younger companions that were not able to go to Badr, they said, no, let's go on the outside of the city and meet them where they're at. So the Kuffar of Quraysh came and they were camping in this area in this direction. So the Kuffar they came from Mecca, they were camping in this direction. Rasul and his army of a thousand left Medina and came in the direction of Uhud. However, they did not come directly, they took a detour. And so that the Kuffar of Quraysh would not see them coming or know where they're at. So they came from a direction somewhere in this way and they camped in this direction. So they had Uhud in front of their backs and the Kuffar of Quraysh was coming from the front. Now, Rasul he placed on their way to Uhud, of the entire thousand, halfway coming along, slowly and slowly, the hypocrites started to retreat and go to the back of the uh, of, of the army. And they said, there's not going to be any war, you know, and if there was going to be a war, we would come and help you. So they said, we're going to stay back, and they literally retreated and went back to Medina. So now you have 700, 700 of the Muslimin coming to Uhud, facing off 3,000. Facing off 3,000. They get to Uhud, now there's 700 of them. They had Bad Uhud protecting them from the back. And Rasul Wasallam ordered 50 of the best archers to be on this hill over here. Who knows the name of this hill? Jabal Huma, right. The one with the arrows basically. Or, so he ordered them, stay on this hill, and keep all the Quraysh from coming around and attacking them from the back. And he said, do not leave your post if you see us winning. Do not leave your post if you see us picking up the ghanima, the spoils of war. Do not leave your post even if you see the vultures coming and picking our bodies. And these were the stern warnings Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam give to these 50 archers. So they were given a stern warning, do not leave this mountain because this is what's gonna protect them from the back. Now, Coming from the Kuffar of Quraysh, you had the skilled Khalid ibn Walid, you had Abu Sufyan, you have the giants of Quraysh, the army generals of the, the best of their time, against the Muslimin of 700. So already you're outnumbered one to three, one to three and a half. Okay, you're outnumbered. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells them, you guys be our protector from our back, we will fight from the front. Now, the battle starts, Ali ibn Abi Talib goes out, some of the other companions goes out and they started defeating the Kuffar of Quraysh. They started defeating Kuffar of Quraysh. And one of the tribes of the Quraysh had a flag bearer. And seven of their flag bearers were killed one after the next. One after the next. One after the next. And when the Kuffar of Quraysh saw this, they started retreating. They started going back. 
when they started going back, the Muslims they became excited and they started going after the, the spoils of war. The spoils of war was basically they left their armors behind, they left all of this. So the Muslims basically said, Palas, let's go pick up these spoils and keep it for us. The archers, they saw this and some of them said, the, the battle is over. The battle is over. At this point, some confusion, some ikhtilaf happened between them and 40 of them said, you know what? The battle is over, we're gonna go join them. 10 of them, including the leader that the Prophet put in charge of them, he said, no, Rasul told us to stay. We're gonna stay until he tells us to get off of this mountain. When those 40 came down, Khalid ibn Walid was a very, very wise army general. He was of the best of the best, the cream of the crop. So as Khalid ibn Walid and the, and the Kuffar Quraysh are retreating, they see that these people are becoming less and less from this mountain. Khalid ibn Walid gathered an army of a couple hundred of the Kuffar Quraysh, came around the back, took out the 10 archers one after the other because they're not able to hold them off. They came from the back, and this is when Khalid ibn Walid was not yet a Muslim, obviously. He comes from the back. Now, you have Kufar Quraysh in the front, you have Kufar Quraysh from the back, and this is when the onslaught start taking place, where 70 of the Sahabas lost their lives. Where Musab bin Umayr, and we know the story, he held the flag with one arm, then that arm was chopped off, he held it with the next arm, that arm was chopped off, he held it between his whatever was left, and then he was martyred in this location. We know at this point in the battle, that there were some Sahabas that saw Rasul Sallallahu being injured. Of them was Abu Talha, Abu Talha radiallahu anhu. And he saw that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was left alone. And he literally went and stood in front of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being a body shield. And he took 70 arrows for Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until he was wiped out in front of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another companion saw that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was left alone by the name of Nu'man ibn uh, 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 and he comes and he tries to protect the Prophet but one of the arrows came and struck him in the eye and his eye literally came out of the socket and here Rasul he turns to Rasul and he's like what do I do and Rasul in all that midst took his eyes to his pat in it okay said a dua put it back and he said that eye became my best eye and he continued to protect the Rasul Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas one of the younger younger one of the youngest of the Sahabas who took place in the battle. He came and stood by Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he would give, uh, the arrows will be flying towards them and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would pick up those arrows and hand it to Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu an. and Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas was able radiallahu anhu was able to hold off that entire army just by himself. At this point in the battle, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they started to be in the, in the middle of an area where they're sandwiched between two armies attacking them from both directions. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gets injured. His actual shield goes into his face and he loses, you know, he gets, it literally goes so far into his, his, his jaw that one of the companions had to bite his shield to take it out. It had to be, in, in such pressure had to be given to take it out. And then he was hit from the other side and the Sahaba did the same thing. And rumors started spreading at this point that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died. That Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died. And some of the Sahabas almost gave up. And they started going off of the battlefield. And you know, behind every man they say is great women, right? Not one, but they're great women. There was a Sahabiyah by the name of Musaiba radiallahu anha. And as these men were basically, they were like, if Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi is going, then why, why live basically? And this is where a lot of them got killed. The Saiba said, give me your armor. I will go and protect Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She runs out to the battlefield and started fighting on the side of the Muslims. And she started fighting. And one of the most touching statements, she turns to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she says, she says to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Am I going to be with you in Jannah? Noting that her own son was injured in this battle. Her own son was injured in this battle. 
And she didn't go and comfort him and say, you know what, you know, take it easy, go back home, everything will be fine. No. She went and stood by Rasulullah and all she wanted was to know she was going to be with the company of Rasulullah in And for us, there are many lessons that we can take away from this. At this point, they started retreating and retreating and there's a cave in this direction where Rasulullah sought refuge and that cave is still available today. But they have closed it off because a lot of people go there and they do a lot of bid'ahat and khurafat. And so the, the best thing was to just close it off so none of that existed today. One of the greatest lessons that we get from all of this is that you follow Rasulullah you will be victorious. The minute you let that down, the minute you think that, you know, you don't need it right now, things may not go the right way. And what happened after they saw that this it wasn't the, the, a total loss, but they saw that this loss was from themselves. In India and Pusihim, they thought that it was from themselves. After that, you saw battle after battle after battle after battle. They won and won and won until Fatima Mecca, until the end of the life of Rasulullah until they became the champions that spread Islam from all the way to China, to Spain, all the way up north and so forth. So what we have here is that you follow Rasulullah Sallallahu always, the victory is always on your side. And this is where the Muslim Ummah is today. We're giving We're going shopping. To the supermarket. So we're back from the tour and we're here. So me and my mom asked um, this taxi driver to take us to a mall and he brought us here and the stuff is not cheap and it I don't know how to explain like the vibe of this store but like this is not what we wanted but the only thing is we did find like a like a towel for my brother wow I haven't vlogged in a while but we came back from shopping did a little bit of shopping near our hotel and then went to like a Umar like discussion with our tour group and then went to pray and stayed at the mosque until Isha. Now we're gonna go shopping. Yeah. No, because I came to one market from not Me and my mom are shopping at a mall. Do you have long dress? Long long abaya. I'm sorry. Who are Oh we were at a mall and we're struggling. We went into this place and the guy was willing to sell me a buys for like twelve dollars, but then um, they were too short. The only one he had that fit me, I did not like. It is 11 o'clock and we're just now getting back from shopping. I'm exhausted and it was disappointing. We didn't have that nice of a selection. All of the stuff they had was for short people. It is 4 30. We just left the hotel. Last day in Medina, Yai. How do you feel? Oh, I'm not going to we are going to Mecca in like an hour and a half, in an hour, and we did Ghusl to prepare to enter the state of Islam. We had to like clip our nails, shave, etc. Um, and now we're gonna go pray Duhur and then pray Asr like early with Duhur and then um, our bus is supposed to leave at 1:15, Inshallah. 
and they said it should take like four or five hours. So we boarded the bus and we're on our way. We ask you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through all your beautiful names and attributes, to accept all that we have done here in Medina, to accept our visit, to accept our salawat, to multiply our salawat by a thousand times and more. We ask you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to shower us with the mercy, with your mercy, Ya Allah. We ask you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to return us back to Medina many, many more times and increase us in our iman. We ask you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that as we're taking our last sight, as we're taking our last look at the Haram of Medina, the Masjid of the Rayyan Rasul Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we ask you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make us among his followers, make us among his true followers. We ask you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to accept from us all that we have done. Forgive us for all of our mistakes. Bless us and bless our families. We ask you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to forgive us and forgive us our families, to grant us and our families Jannatul Firdaus. And as we take our last look at the Masjid al Nabawi, we ask you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make it dear to our hearts. And let our hearts yearn to come over and over again and give us an opportunity to come over and over again. We ask you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to accept all that we have done and to grant us all Jannatul Firdaus. Rabbana ghalamna anfusana wa illam tawfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa fi na adhab al-nar. We ask you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to accept from us and to forgive us and to grant us all Jannatul Firdaus. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen.